Hey nurse family, welcome back to part three of a three part series where I go over needle sizes, syringes, how to know which one to choose, and IM and sub Q injections. This video will refer to how to administer a subcutaneous injection. Kick. Hey. So today we're taking care of Jason C.T. Lee. He was the same patient that we took care of last time. We gave him an intramuscular injection. Today we're going to be giving him his heparin subcutaneously prophylactic to prevent DVT since he is status post-surgery. So my doctor just ordered heparin 5,000 units sub-Q BID. Okay, and so my patient is going to be receiving this subcutaneously and heparin is a medication that is preferred to get, be given in the abdomen because of its rate of absorption. The abdomen will absorb the medication a lot faster than, um, let's say, um, the back of the arm, which is also another common site for subcutaneous injections. The heparin is preferred and Lovenox is preferred to give in the abdomen. Okay, so... First thing I'm gonna go ahead and do is perform my hand hygiene and go into my medication room and gather my supplies. Okay, so I'm currently in my med room, AKA my room. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if every bedroom had some animal so, prints? I'm gonna go ahead, I already performed my hand hygiene. I'm gonna go ahead and gather my supplies. And today I have heparin 5,000 units to give. And most commonly you will find in a hospital that um, the vials are 5,000 units per one milliliter, okay? And so I have 5,000 units per one milliliter here, and my doctor ordered 5,000 units sub Q, BID, so that means that I'm going to be administering one milliliter. Now, when we talk about insulin, I mentioned in my previous video that when we talk about insulin, we use units and we get an insulin syringe, which is in units. But when we talk about heparin, we don't go by units because remember that syringe that I showed you for the insulin was 100 units, right? So if we had to do 5,000 units, that would be um, impossible. We would need several syringes. So here we're still talking about milliliters, but we know that 5,000 units are in one milliliter. So if I needed to administer 2,500 units, I would be administering half a milliliter. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. These are pretty common, except that this is again simulated heparin. So the vial that I have is a little bit bigger. Most often when you administer heparin, the vial is pretty small and they give you just the right amount of medication. Okay, so I have my medication. I have my blunt needle, which this is an 18 gauge, one and a half inch blunt needle to withdraw my medication. Definitely with heparin, you want to administer um, with a different needle than what you with use to withdraw the medication because heparin is very irritating to the, the surrounding tissue. Um, and then um, the needle that I most commonly use in my hospital for subcutaneous injections, and it is appropriate for my patient, Jason, is the 5 8 inch needle 25 gauge. So I grab that. Also going to need my alcohol and a gauze. Now, do we rub once we administer the heparin? Absolutely not. We don't rub but we might need a gauze just in case there's bleeding. And obviously there could be bleeding because of the fact that we're giving an anticoagulant. All right, so of course, I'm gonna go over to my patient's room. I'm gonna perform my hand hygiene again. I'm going to introduce myself. I'm gonna identify my patient. I'm gonna ask about allergies. I'm gonna explain my procedure. Let me know in the comment box what else I'm missing. I'm definitely not trying to be comprehensive. You know, you're gonna do your five checks. You're gonna check them three times. Um, um, for the sake of the video, trying to speed along here. I'm gonna go ahead and grab some gloves. And so I'm gonna withdraw my medication and I'll show you that again. I know I already showed it to you in the previous video, but I'll show you that again, just because I think it is very helpful for you guys to see it a couple times. I'm gonna grab my alcohol, gonna vigorously scrub the top for 15 seconds, sorry, okay. 
Oh, did I miss something? You guys didn't tell me? Or you were probably yelling at me in the screen? <laughs> I missed my syringe. So I do see nurses all the time use a three milliliter syringe. I don't know, I just got in the habit early on of using a one milliliter syringe. So that's what I'm grabbing. So I grab my syringe. I'm going to expose my needleless blunt needle, or I should say my lure lock blunt needle. I'm gonna go ahead and pull back one ml. Gonna grab my vial and I'm gonna inject air. I'm gonna turn it over. And the biggest thing I'll tell you about the heparin, they only give you like you just the right amount. So you always, as you're withdrawing the medication, you're just making sure that your bevel does not go below the um, fluid line because then you'll get a ton of air. And then you'll wonder, why am I not getting anything? Okay, so I always get a little bit more than I need just so that I can get any air out. And I'm gonna go ahead and use the scoop method. The blunt needle does not have a safety, so you wanna be careful. And I'm gonna go ahead and push it up to one milliliter. Good, I don't have any air. And I'm at one milliliter, and my vial said 5,000 units per one milliliter, and I wanted to get 5,000 units. But I don't want to use this needle because this is my blunt needle. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in my sharps container. And I'm going to grab my 5 8 inch needle, which happens to be 25 gauge, and connect it. Okay. Now, um, I'm going to also, so the like I said, I'm going to go in the abdomen. So I'm going to start in exactly where I'm intending to insert the needle. And I'm going to go in a firm circular motion outward and I'm not going to go back in and then I'm going to let it air dry. Okay. I'm not going to fan it or dry it. I'm going to let it air dry. Now you will decide whether or not you need to pinch the subcutaneous tissue, the adipose tissue based on how much adipose tissue that you see, because you may need to pull away to lift it away from um, the tissue. So you might wanna, you know, pull, in most cases you are going to be pinching the skin, okay? Apparently it, it does say in the book that um, holding it taut is less painful, but um, in most cases you're gonna be pinching the skin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pinch the skin. I don't think you can see this that great. Let me see if I can turn over to the other side. Okay, so I'm going to pinch the skin. Again, same thing with the IM, except with sub-Q, I'm going in at a 45 to 90 degree angle, depending on how much adipose tissue I am working with and the length of my needle. Okay, so I'm pinching the skin. I'm going to go in a dart motion at a 45. This is about a little more than 45. And now I'm going to release that... Um, pinch and I'm going to stabilize my needle and I'm going to go ahead and instill my medication. It's 10 seconds per ml. Okay. And then I'm going to leave it there for about 10 seconds. I'm going to withdraw my fingers because I do not want to accidentally stick myself. I'm going to withdraw the needle the same way I went in. And then I'm going to activate my, my safety using my thumb or some places, many facilities, the nurses will use like the guardrail or something. The main thing I want to stress is you're not going to put your hand over. Then you're going to go ahead and grab your gauze and you're not going to rub or massage. You'll just basically place it on there if it's bleeding. Um, you know, just place it on there to collect any blood. Okay. And so then when you're done, you're going to grab all your garbage and you're going to throw it in the garbage and you're going to put your needle right into your sharps container. Okay. Um, and then obviously you would document your um, administration of the medication. All right. So I hope that was helpful to you. 
Um, again, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave them in the comment box. I'm always reading your questions and comments and I do try to respond as quickly as I can. Um, I hope that you're all out there um, having great clinical experiences, but if you're not, hopefully this video is helpful to you. All right, have a good day. Bye-bye. One, two, three, come on!